What I want to do is grow the biggest bass ever caught in the state. There he is. It's like Jurassic Park. Slaws on him, drop the poles. Stupid cold, the snagging camera guy said if we get 3,000 likes on this damn survival video, I had to buy him one of these new Millican fishing jackets. So, hey, he's got his own now. He doesn't know it though. Hey, Cole, I got you something. What? You bet. What? It's the best day of your life. That looks like the one you're wearing. Only cleaner <laughs> and a patch. You bet. Well, wow, thanks, dude. You bet. <laughs> What is up in that for so freaking excited for today's video. I've kind of hinted at what we're about to do moving forward. So right back here behind me, there's a pond that I have fished. First, I got introduced to this pond by Father Zach. You guys have seen Father Zach on many videos, but I've fished this pond for several years and it's a really good pond. It's loaded with bass. Used to have a ton of panfish in it as well, but mostly we'd come out here, well, we generally catch some like one and a half to four pound bass. Last year, a nine pounder actually got caught out of here as well, but there's not a whole lot of fish in between that area. So the last few years fishing this lake, one thing we noticed is the bluegill population has been almost entirely eaten or killed off. I don't know, but it's almost gone completely. So all the bass in this lake have almost nothing to eat. There's very, very little food to go around. And because of that, the bass just aren't getting big and getting to the size where they should be getting to. So even though that sucks about the fish population doing that, I have some great news for you guys. That is, I talked to the owner of this pond. He wants me to manage it moving forward. So we're going to manage the entire fish population from the forage base, the largemouth, bigger predators, the habitat, everything that goes along with this freaking pond. I'm so excited. You guys know I love to catch big bass and go search for the biggest bass ever. The number one goal for this pond, for me, what I want to do is grow the biggest bass ever caught in the state, the state record bass. We're gonna need a 10 plus pounder. Now there is one, uh, maybe two that we know of that are eight to nine pounds. So we're not that far away with those. But the biggest thing is there's way too many of those smaller size bass. So the main things we're gonna need to do and focus on to make the biggest bass possible in this pond, number one is we need to cut down on the population of bass. If there's too many small bass, the population density is too high and it skews towards the lower end. They don't get fat, they don't get long, they don't grow, their frames are not that big. We need to remove a bunch of bass out of this lake. Number two, we need to increase the forage base greatly. All the bluegill that just used to be loaded in this lake, even when myself and Zark came out here, I fishing we weren't even marking any i think he caught one maybe the entire time we we're here but we weren't marking anymore seeing anything around here so we need to ha have some ideas from you guys of what forage is stocking here i would love to go and stock a bunch of bluegill stock a bunch of golden shiners because they do extremely well in ponds like this and of course you guys know larry the uh, the old bait guy he has a bunch of golden shiners at his spot so let's do this right now if this video gets 5,000 thumbs ups i'm gonna go and buy every single shiner that larry the fish keeping guy at la bait and tackle I'm gonna go buy every single shiner his entire place. Probably get some bluegill, some minnows, some crawdads. I don't know, he's got all sorts of stuff there. That's gonna be a great place to start, but I have bigger things in mind. We need to establish a population base of the forage in order to grow these fish really, really big that eat those in here. So I think we need to get like some wholesale stuff. I don't know, let us know down in the comments what you guys wanna see. The next thing we need to do uh, to make these bass grow bigger and bigger, we need to increase the habitat. So let's talk about how this lake kind of lays out. I'm not sure how many acres this is, but this lake's probably eight to 10 acres, I would guess, in size. It's got a dam over there. Most of the lake has riprap rock around it to kind of help with the erosion that's happened over time, but it has gotten very, very silted in. Now to combat that, the owner took a backhoe and has gone on a couple parts of the lake and actually scooped it out and made it like six to eight feet deep in these little tunnels, these canal looking spots between the flat spot that's silted in the bank. So those are already good habitat areas right there. This right here back behind us was, was the main creek that was here before the farm was actually dammed up, the dam back there, dammed up this creek. Uh, and so you got these trees here, they go out for a little ways, they go underneath the water. That's the best habitat of this entire lake. Now, while that's good, it's only about five to eight feet deep in the canal, the, the channel right there, which is not very deep, it's not very much water. And once you get out in the main lake, the deepest spot is only 10 to 12 feet deep. I know that from ice fishing, it was dark. The lake also has an island on it. So there's an island out there. We call it Goose Island because there's about a million geese out there. Cole saw and I brought the boat. We're about to go do some fishing here in a little bit, but it's so damn windy. I don't know if we should have it out there and have it anchored. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. We might take her out to Goose Island and piss off some geese and, and catch some bass here in a little bit. But one great thing this pond has going for it when it comes to the cover, it has really, really good grass. It has milfoil in this lake 
that grows up every summer. The topwater frog bite's awesome. It's a great place once we get that forage base established, get those bluegill in here, hopefully get some shiners in here, whatever else you guys think, for them to hide, for them to grow, to reproduce, and keep those young of the year fry from getting eaten by all the bass immediately. So it has great, great grass. Right now, kind of slimy grass this early in the year, but I'm sure a lot of the milfoil is starting to build up as well. So like I said, number one, we need to decrease the entire population of bass. Number two, we need to add forage to the lake. Number three, I think we really need to add some more habitat. So give us again, some more ideas on what type of habitat you guys would think would be great to, to add to this lake out here. Number four, and something that's very, very overlooked, we need to improve the genetics of this lake if we're gonna have the biggest bass possible. Genetics of a fishery is something that's super, super overlooked. A lot of lakes around here, for whatever reason, they just grow bigger fish. But the main reason for that is likely genetics. Because you can have the best habitat, the most forage in a lot of the lakes. You guys have seen it this spring. We've been fishing these lakes where it's like, we're crushing big fish, but the ceiling at the large majority of these lakes, even in the spawn in the pre-spawn phase, is six to six and a half pounds in these northern strain lakes. They just don't get a lot bigger than that. And one main reason is genetics. So we need to either one, we need to catch some really big framed fish that can grow really, really long. Uh, or two, we need to stock uh, a different type of fish. Florida strain come to mind. There's F1 hybrids, which are a Florida strain, northern strain mix, which can deal with this colder weather and colder climate up here a lot better. I don't know, that's something we'll probably see down the road a little bit too though. But first things first, we're about to break the biggest, I don't know, rule in all of like bass fishing culture. Today we're gonna do step number one. We are gonna cut down the bass population. Every time we're out here, mixed in with a lot of the, the two to three pound bass, we catch a lot of one to two pound bass. It's not gonna do us any good if we stock a bunch of forage and bait fish in here, if we have a giant largemouth bass population of little fish, because those will get eaten up. The fish will maybe gain a little bit of weight, but then we'll just be back to the square one where we have no more forage in the lake. So number one, today's goal is to catch as many of the smaller one to two pound size largemouth bass that are in this lake and it is freaking loaded with them. And then we're gonna go home and do something that I have not done since I was a little kid. We're going to clean these largemouth bass up and eat them. We don't wanna waste them, of course. I don't know, Cole, have you ever eaten largemouth bass? I think once when I was young. Yeah, we used to, we were kind of meat fishermen. When I was a toddler like coleslaw, we used to, uh, once in a while, I'd beg my dad enough. He'd let me keep like a 15 inch bass every once in a while. Honestly, I, I remember them being okay to eat. I probably wasn't very picky with my palate back then with fish, but uh, the water's cold. It's still pre-spawn, probably 50 degrees or so. It looks really, really clean today. So this will be about as good a bass as I think you could potentially eat, especially the smaller size we're gonna keep. I don't know, you guys will have to stick around to the end to see how that goes, but don't forget, 5,000 thumbs up. I'll go by every single shiner at Larry's house. We got the boat with us. It's pretty windy out here. I think we're gonna start flipping some of these trees back here to catch some of these bass. Maybe take the boat out, maybe go to the Goose Island. I don't know, it's gonna be a good time though, Cole. Let's get some. All right, here we go. We need to catch as many fish as possible. We got a couple hours to do it. I'm gonna start with old Mr. Prawn flipping these trees. We'll see if they're in the trees. These trees are pretty tough to fish from the boat anyway. So doing it from the bank, I think it's gonna be ideal. Probably should be throwing a clout. The old stick worm catches everything, so I don't know. We'll see. I also think it's entirely possible we could get attacked by a goose today. Also could be interesting. There we go. There we go, that's the right size too. This is the one we wanna get out of here. The dudes that are this size, and as you can see, not a very meaty fish. We noticed that ice fishing too, despite most of the fish, other lakes around here being thick, very skinny caliber of fish in this lake. And again, that's from not eating. So this guy, unfortunately or fortunately, is gonna be added to our feast. Same caliber fish, under two pounder. That guy's eating a little bit better. Nothing crazy for his belly, but another of the right kind of fish. 
to be keeping out of here. If you guys have conditions like this where you got clean water, sun's out, all these fish like to go into some of these uh, the timber and stuff with the, the shaded conditions. This is the uh, this is the bait I like to pick up, Texas rigged prawn. I do it on an unpicked weight too. If you have a lot of vertical cover like this, that way your weight falls first and it's kind of a, a more natural fall if you can get away with it. If you got a lot of branches and stuff and uh, more bushy type timber, I like to peg my weight, but this will do the trick today. Number three. Oh, he got away. Never mind. I lied. I didn't have one on at all. I'm not even that mad about that one. That one was uh, closer two and a half, three pounds. So probably not one we want to keep anyways. A little bit better quality fish anyway. God, they're freaking loaded right there. And I lost my damn prawn. Piss. There we go. There we go. Just switched over to the clout and look at that. We got ourselves a little clout chaser. Yep, that's the edible variety. Little guy. Oh, that was a big one. That was much larger than what we've had on. Let's see if he'll bite this time. Makes me wish I had a uh, moving bait to tie on. Reeled that cloud and he freaking chased it out of the water. Oh, that might be hurt, that might be hurt. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, bud. That one is not gonna be a keeper guy. That's a throwback guy. Ow, fuck me. Ah, he's got some sharp teeth too. Yeah, that's definitely one. We're gonna let back in here. That's about a uh, 17 or so inch fish. Not a very fat one, but good frame on her. On the cloud. It's so windy, it's so hard for you. You probably can't even hear what I'm saying. I hope you guys can, but. I actually ran out of prawns. We thought we brought our bag of prawns, but we're stupid. I just had the one tied on. So now I switched up to the clout, took my weight off, throwing them weightless. Just letting them flutter down, do his thing. Boom. Oh, that was so sick. I just watched that one come up and eat it. It's a tank. Oh, get out of there, big girl, come in here. Yes, that's a different caliber fish right there. That was so cool, I could see my cloud. I just came way up this creek. I could see my cloud sinking down, all of a sudden I saw this fish just swim up and crush it. But unfortunately, as you guys can see, something's wrong with that fish. Where's its belly? God dang. Cole, I got a big one. I watched him eat it. It was neat. Cole's freaking out and throwing stuff back there. I really hope he's gonna be all right. And too shallow. Yeah, you gotta put your line down or else cast downwind like that. Or upwind. <laughs> there he is. Oh, that's a big one. Cole, do you think I would shit you? Do you really think I would shit you? Cause I wouldn't. It's one of them better caliber ones. I just told Slaw to cast here and he didn't didn't believe me that there was fish and now look at him. Here he comes to cut my line. I was trying to explain to Cole how complicated it is to throw a clout. You have to freaking, you gotta cast it out there. And that's it, you just gotta cast it out there. Biggin, best one we've caught today. Fat one, that one was actually built right. I think we're about to take the boat out. I kinda wanna hit the island. Goose Island, all right Cole, watch this. All right, you cast it, and then you just hold it. Cast and hold, they call it. All right, now it should be to the bottom. We're gonna reel up, see if there's one. No, there's not one there. We're gonna move it about a foot further. Let it do the same thing. You got it, Cole. Got her down pat. And then you just start ripping. It's crazy how effective these things are, though. Okay, there we go. Slaw's on them, drop the poles. He found the spot. Did you catch one too big, Cole? Yeah. He is too big. He is too big. He's like a two and a half. Fat two and a half pounder. I did it. Did you take my advice and my tips, Cole? I did it. 
cold. It's great. It's stick worm fishing. Way to catch a one too big to keep, dickhead. Jesus. Help the team out a little bit, would you? That's all. You ready to do this? Let's do it. Should we go to Goose Island? It's freaking, there's trying to white cap out here. I think it's deeper out there. Let's try to see if we can get some on that island. White caps on a four acre pond. That's right. We're going to freaking go out there. We're going to fight some geese, steal some eggs, have some eggs to cook up with our large mouth. <laughs> Goose eggs. My favorite. All right. We're coming in hot, Goose Island, if we don't get blown away in the hurricane first. Cole, will you uh, scan around with pan optics on the way out to the island? I want to see where these fish are at. Coal optics, they call it. Put your head underwater. You guys are about to see why we call it Goose Island. We should have brought some Goose Islands to drink during this. They know what's about to happen. They're about to witness us ripping some lamps. God, slaw. You can always count on you. All right, now stand there and hold that, okay? Thank you. All right, we're not gonna be total dickheads, but this is why we call it Goose Island. We got those geese up there. Look at all these some bitch eggs. It's like Jurassic Park. Woo! I think if you touch them, they won't go to them anymore. And honestly, probably should touch them because we don't want the damn goose population. Goose, geese are out of control up here, but we're gonna be nice today. We're not gonna do a goose egg catch and cook. Maybe. You got one, Cole? On Goose Island. That's a, that's a good one. Might be totally wrong. I'm not sure. Cole's PB anyway. Oh no, just a baby. Just a baby. That's gonna eat well. God, it's weird keeping these. He's not a baby. He's a decent one, but he's the eating size, isn't he, Cole? Throw him in the raft. Look at him all fanned out. He is all fanned and pissed. We just came out here. Totally changed things up. There's a drop off out here in some grass, so we're throwing some. Uh, Snatches! Some gold ones. Wow, that's disgusting, Cole. First cast over in the shallower water. Shallower. Maybe they move shallower. Here we go. Here we go. Look at this guy. Whoa. This guy is a freak. What has he been eating? A softball? Oh my god. What is that? It's like he swallowed a bunch of water. This is the first fish we've seen that's been fat this entire time. Whoa. Dude, it's like, it's like watery. It's like an air bladder issue or something. Yeah, it is. That's not a, uh, that's not food, it's air. It is, yeah. it's totally air. Wonder if that's why he fought stupid coming in. Think he'll swim away weird? No, looks like he took off. That was like, there was nothing in there. It wasn't an egg sack or anything. So weird. Another one. Yeah. No, Cole. There's uh, there's none there. Straight reel though. Good God, we're getting attacked on Goose Island. Look at this little piddly dick. We don't want him in here. Andy's too small to clean up. This reel is incredible. I love it. I'm gonna sit down and eat some combinations. So it's a combo of baked tortilla chips and seven layer dip filling. Cool. That's what the combination it is. There we go. Just had to talk smack about him, slaw. Come here, bud. Oh, it's a marlin. That one's borderline. Nah, he'll eat. That's an eater. He's only about a 14 inch guy. You bet. On the old snatch, crushed it, ripped out of that grass. Pa pow Kids would say, I'm gonna send it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, my monster. Okay, monster's good. <laughs> Dude, I risked it for the biscuit and I lost. <laughs> Goodbye, Goose Island. Seriously, I haven't had a beer yet. Well, I feel like a total dickhead. I always preach not to keep bass. And um, obviously you don't want to go out and take a bass that's like a sport fish, a big one out of a public body of water. But this lake is loaded. As you guys can see, pretty damn good haul of uh, one and a half to two, I don't think any of them are really over two pounds, 
maybe a two and a quarter in there, this guy right here. But one and a half to two pound bass just loaded in this lake. All of them pretty thin bass. They don't seem to be growing very well. The, the bigger three to three and a half pound bass we caught today that we threw back, none of them had bellies on them. So taking these bass out of here, I think is the smartest thing to do to thin the herd and uh, have the big fish get the, get the meats, the, the shiners and stuff. But um, yeah, next up, we're gonna take these guys home. We're gonna clean them up and we're gonna taste largemouth bass, which I literally probably haven't had for 25 years. Um, so I'm kind of interested to, to kind of see what they taste like, especially now that I've tried about every type of freshwater fish there is. And of course, don't forget, we need 5,000 likes. Go hit the thumbs up right now. If all of you hit the thumbs up, we'll get there easily. So go hit the thumbs up right now. That way we can go get a whole shitload a bait to feed these uh, these bass and make them grow much bigger than this, but catch you guys at home. Well, Cole, it's time to be a bad person, I suppose. This isn't something that should make me this sad, to be honest. A lot of people eat bass all over the place and don't think anything of it. And today, under the circumstances that we are, it ain't a big deal. This is a thing that's gonna help the fishery in the pond. But I'm so freaking excited about this new project we're taking on. We need names for the project, guys. Look at that, that's a little old female bass. Gonna have eggs and gonna have eggs. Gonna have babies here, not that long, but more small fish that we don't need in the pond. Look at this meat though, Cole. Looks like a crappie fillet. Yeah, it really doesn't look bad at all. Come out of that nice clean water. I mean, that's a good amount of meat too on a fish it's gonna be good but yeah we uh we need some some ideas for names for this project um i don't care something slaunch something we can name the pond whatever i just want something might even make like a shirt for it but between that and the tournament series the online tournament series we've been putting on super fun gonna have a good time with that let us know what you want to see for content though moving forward as far as that pond what type of stuff you want to see stocked in it if you have anything uh if you're a, a pond managing expert or you've done it if they have any advice for us, that'd be great too. Let us know. Um, need the help we can get. Obviously, internet's a great resource, and I got some friends that, that have a lot of experience in it, but something that I uh, always want to give you guys what you want, and if it's reasonable, we'll make it happen. But I'm going to send Coleslaw home, so Coleslaw's getting out of here. I'm going to fillet up the rest of these bass and between me and Becky and uh, Osborne. Osborne will probably only eat two or three of these fillets. He's only about three weeks old now, so we don't want to give him too much. But... Uh, between us, we're gonna give this a try. See what we think of this bass. It looks really good. Obviously, we're not gonna cook it all up, throw some more in the fridge, but all in all, good haul today. All right, get these guys cooked up. Got them soaking in some milk. We're doing, let's see, buffalo style shore lunch. This stuff's freaking good. Directly into the oil. Sorry if you hear Ozzy back behind. He is super pissed off that I did not take him fishing today. So doing a little bit of crying back there. All right, moment of truth here. This actually, it looks really good. The meat turned out super white and flaky, and that's about as good of coating as you can get on it. The tartar sauce, buffalo franks. A little hot. Woo! It's actually good, Rebecca. I think you're gonna like it. It's gonna have Becky try this on camera, but Ozzy's screaming in her damn face. Teach him how to use a bait caster last week and all of a sudden I don't take him fishing one day and he gets pissed off at me. It was actually really good, as much as it pains me to say it. Damn, it feels good outside. It's freaking nice tonight. I'm so glad to finally get some nice weather here in the Midwest and so excited about this new project we're taking on with the new pond. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Myself and Coleslaw had a good time and uh, we have plenty more stuff to do once again for the thousandth time. I'm gonna tell you, go hit the thumbs up. 5,000 of those in a couple days, you're gonna see a really, really cool video. Taking some, uh, taking some bait to the pond. I wanna go sell Larry out. Larry's a good dude. We love his bait shop. He always helps us out and hooks us up. So I guess we might as well uh, go support him. But thanks for watching this video. I'm we'll catch you soon.